Okay, and we're gonna get your f***ing son, stained Donald Trump Jr., and your daughter. Michael Rappaport is an idiot. Mr. Reagan. So I was uh, scrolling through Twitter this morning, and I stumbled upon a video posted by Kaya Jones. I don't know Kaya Jones, uh, but she seems like an incredibly intelligent woman. I suggest following her on Twitter. She posted this video of a gentleman by the name of Michael Rappaport. Now, right, Michael Rappaport is, you probably recognize him from TV and movies. He's one of these sort of no-talent actors that just gets put into films because he's not particularly memorable, <laughs> and you don't want intense characters conflicting with the leads, right? With the heroes and the villains and the main characters. Uh, you need these sort of subtle, nobody characters to come in sometimes and do a few lines. Is this your daughter or not? No. What, do you think I would pimp out my own daughter and put her in some twisted Mandingo scenario? Now, he purports to be a comedian. He's not funny. <laughs> I've never seen anything good that he's performed. I mean, I suppose there are some people who like him, but his niche in, in the world seems to be the actor that you can kind of vaguely recognize, but you don't know what from, and you don't know his name. Now, to his credit, I've done some acting in Hollywood. He's way more successful than I am at it, so congratulations to him for that. But I think a lot of it has to do with luck and less to do with him being you know, a talented person. Rapport is not what you're talking about. Anyway, so this video is of Michael Rappaport expressing himself in quite possibly the most vulgar terms possible, uh, is just utter hatred of Donald Trump and how he thinks Donald Trump should go to prison and all this kind of stuff. But the reason I want to show it to you is because I think it's a brilliant illustration of exactly how many people on the left feel right now and exactly how irrational they are. Let's have a look at this. F stain! Dirty f***ing dick stain! You heard what Mueller said? The only reason why you're not in prison right now, you is because you're the president, because they couldn't arrest you. You're the one fucking person who couldn't get arrested for what you've done, you sloppy dog. You committed crimes, you just committed crimes well. Congratulations, okay? You're a good criminal. You should be fucking proud of yourself, okay? You better win in 2020, because if you don't win in fucking 2020, you fat sloppy dog, you. We're gonna arrest you, okay? We're gonna put you in an orange jumpsuit, Okay, that's gonna match your orange f***ing skin. Okay, you're gonna be in a prison next to El Chapo. That's the kind of criminals you're gonna be next to. Okay, and we're gonna get your f***ing son, stained Donald Trump Jr., and your daughter, and that f***ing mute f***ing junkyard Jarrett. You f***ing criminal. You crook. You pimp. You con man, you. <laughs> Delightful. Uh, all right, so all right, so what do I have to say about this? Why would I show you this absolute garbage? Um, look, I think it's valuable to see what people have to say, even if they're morons, right? Uh, this guy in particular, I, I tend to. I've worked a lot in Hollywood. I've worked with like a lot of A-list actors and you know guys like this, uh, kind of like D-listers. And I tend to find that the D-listers tend to have this kind of attitude all the time. They're just you know, it's all about me. I'm a big star. I'm a big deal. And it's because they have that kind of inferiority complex, right? They feel like they should be bigger than they are. The A-listers are all pretty confident people. They are, they're they're kind of like, all oh, right, well, you know, I've made it. I know people think I'm awesome. Everything's cool. And they're really nice to you. George Clooney, super nice guy, really charming guy. Uh, political views, completely insane. But as a regular human being, you know, you can sit down and you can talk to the guy. And he's just a, a nice, normal guy. Uh, this guy... I've never worked with him. I imagine that he's difficult to work with on set. I imagine he's an unpleasant person to talk to. He, he seems like he's got some kind of insecurity issues. It's not because he's swearing at the president right now. I've watched a lot of stuff with him in it. Sometimes he sounds like a kind of a mafioso, like he's trying to, he's trying to mimic uh, what he sees in like Goodfellas, right? This is a character that he's portraying right now. This is not him, right? He's a Jewish guy from New York. He, he's like, he looks like a marshmallow, all right? This guy could not punch out probably like a 12 year old girl the, the guy is a weak person chris anderson it's championship night interviews free game i know but we're on live tv birdman Oh my God. I think he got it after the second time he told him, 
I don't do interviews in pre. I think he got it. You know, Mike thought he was tough and could, could force Birdzilla to do it. He's like, no, that's, that's not going down. Oh, my gosh. Hey, Rap, you okay, man? No, I'm not. I'm not, man. I would like to have somebody sit with me during the game because I don't feel comfortable right now. It makes sense that he would take on the persona of an aggressive, intimidating person, right? Uh, you know, swearing aggressively is an intimidating thing to do. It's an intimidating way to speak. And there is a kind of a, an idea that some people have that if you speak aggressively enough, you can actually talk somebody down. So you can intimidate somebody just by your words, and then they won't fight you. This is probably something that he learned to do early on, and this has kind of become what he does as a kind of defense mechanism, because he's not, he's a weak person. He's like a physically weak person. He's probably not intellectually very strong. And so he aggressively goes after people with swear words. I mean, everybody, you, anyone can say what he's just said. It doesn't take a broad vocabulary. I mean, I could say this about Hillary. You know, Hillary, you fucking what the f you are a criminal you go to prison bitch. right i mean like <laughs> like just swearing at, at somebody and telling them that they're you know a piece of shit and they need to go to, to prison or whatever uh that doesn't add to the conversation so although I, I actually respect anyone who wants to express a political idea and i respect even if they do it in a uh, provocative way like the swearing thing is very provocative i don't mind that including zero substance, and this is not a white supremacist symbol, this is the symbol for zero, uh, zero substance, okay, in this, you know, excellent, expletive written uh, rant, reduces what he's saying to just pure hatred, pure bile, and although I think that he has the right to do that, I don't think he should be taken off Twitter or, you know, wherever it is he posted this Instagram. Um, although they would definitely take an, a conservative off of media. Can you imagine if I said this about Barack Obama? Barack Obama, you fucking piece of shit. You dirty, sloppy dog. You fucking dog. I mean, instantly, you're, you're a racist. Go to, you know, you're kicked off of YouTube, you know. To the YouTube overlords, uh, that, that was an example. There's an illustration of how ridiculous this guy's being. It was, I don't really think... Obama is a dirty dog or whatever this guy said. But look, we need to be able to speak intelligently about our differences. We need to be able to communicate effectively. This is not effective communication. Rapport is noise what talking about. In fact, I'm not even sure that this guy hates Trump as much as he's pretending. Maybe he does, maybe he does. Um, but it's very possible that he just wants to improve his career, right? So this may just be a pure virtue signal, right? Look, everybody in Hollywood, look how brilliant I am. I hate Trump. I'm awesome. Hire me. I'm a good actor. Uh, you know, like, uh, eh, you know, in Hollywood, it, it sometimes it works, I think. And people think, oh, this guy's great. He has the same views. He hates Trump as much as I do. We'll tire that guy for, for our movie. Uh, so it may just be, you know, this may just be a Jussie Smollett situation, right? Where he's, the, if I can, like, get some attention for myself by being a total then uh, then maybe I can get hired on a, on a Spielberg film or something, right? It's, you know, the douchiest strategy ever, but it works, I think, for some of these guys. Now, if, if that's not really what's going on, if the guy genuinely hates Trump this much, um, which I also think is a, a strong possibility, then, uh, then he's just a perfect example, perfect example of Trump derangement syndrome, which I think, you know, perpetuates, you know, constantly through the Democratic Party, especially in, like, the bubble of Hollywood and this sort of thing. If he had said anything substantive, I, you know, I, would, I wouldn't even be doing a video here because I just think, maybe I would do a video, but it would be a respectful video. This video is just about how Michael Rappaport is a piece of shit. You know, he's, he's just a piece of garbage going around spewing this, you know, whatever, rain, blah, 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 no substance, just I hate Trump. Rappaport is noise talking about. Uh, and this is the mentality of the Democrats in office as well. And I think that's the kind of the scarier thing. It's not just these Hollywood elites, uh, I wouldn't call him an elite, but, you know, these Hollywood folks that seem to think that Donald Trump needs to be put in jail for essentially nothing. I mean, what is it that he's even accusing Donald Trump of? He doesn't say in the video, he just says, you're a criminal, your son's a criminal, your daughter's a criminal, everybody's a criminal. I mean, come on, could you imagine somebody saying that about Obama? Obama, as soon as you're out of office, we're going to throw you in prison. We're going to take your daughters and put them in prison too, and your wife and your dog. You know, like, it's, it's meant, the guy's a mental case, right? So uh, <laughs> we, we can't get away with that. You know, conservatives can't get away with that. We know that. We don't do that sort of thing. Honestly, I don't think most Republicans would do that kind of thing anyway. But, uh, but yeah, this guy. And the really thing that, that really is kind of sad, actually, about a video like this is the, the guy is assuming the character of, like, Joe Pesci and Goodfellas. You sh kicking stinky horseman horse-smelling mother you. You f me up over there. I'll stick you in a hole in the 
You understand? Who oh. to apologize? Okay, get the f Right, and he's got the kind of squint of like, uh, you know, of like Robert De Niro, you know, acting like, you know, hey, yeah. he's got that kind of squint that Robert De Niro does. What the fuck did you do? You f lost it. I thought you said you had it together. So he's mimicking Robert De Niro. He's trying to talk like Joe Pesci. He's trying to be a tough guy. Got a little bit of a hip hop attitude. I've seen some of his stuff. He kind of pretends to be black sometimes. I don't know why. Yo, listen, you either down for the LGBTQ cause or you not. You can't say rap without saying my fucking name. Come on, man. Get, get the f Cause See, my whole thing is this. If you're going to pop shit, I'm going to track you down. I'm going to talk about your moms. Uh -huh. I'm going to talk about your wife. And if I see a <laughs> cockeyed kid on there, I'm going to talk about that little mother too. Because it's, it's open no, for him. Yo, you, you no, cock no, no, kid. Kid. Heather, you kid. talking greasy. We're going we gonna to get it on and pop. And Michael Rappaport, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, and he's black. <laughs> uh, Jewish guy from New York wants to be black. Okay. <laughs> I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Maybe this is the kind of guys that you hung out with growing up or something. Um, but yeah, he's a weak person who is trying to personify a tough person so to intimidate people that he's speaking to. I honestly think that he looks like a marshmallow. I don't think that he could physically harm anyone. I mean, the guy's probably 6'2". I'm like, what, 5'9"? I mean, come on, I could take this guy out. And I don't say that about everybody. I mean, I, mean, I wouldn't fight a professional boxer. But I take this guy out. You know, I never boxed in my life. I think I could beat up this guy. Anyway, this is the sort of thing that you can expect in you know the next year, the next two years, coming up to the election. If you're a leftist, please, you know, even if even if you don't vote for Trump or or you know go toward the middle or reject these people, which I think you should. But even if you don't reject them, try to discord this kind of stuff because we need to be able to ex express ourselves um, well, uh, clearly. I want to be able to know what you think so that I can then either change my mind to what you're saying, or I can, uh, like I can come up with um, a reasonable rebuttal against you. you. There's no reasonable rebuttal for I hate Donald Trump. It's like, okay, I mean, you shouldn't, but okay, uh, you know, what do you say to that? So yeah, this is the kind of lack of reason that you can expect from leftists going forward. And I'm not just talking about like the Antifa radical left. I'm talking about relatively moderate leftists are losing their mind at this point, right? The, the, the persecution of Donald Trump really does need to end. I actually posted um, on both Facebook and uh, Twitter recently, can somebody give me a single reason why Donald Trump should be impeached or that we should go through impeachment proceedings? I didn't look at my Twitter yet. That probably has better answers. But on my Facebook, there was nothing. Nobody had a reason. I have a lot of leftist friends. I'm pretty far leftist friends. I mean, I live in LA. Like, all my friends are leftists. Nobody could give me a good answer. It was not even a reasonable answer. Nobody even actually addressed it. They just said, we should look into him. We should investigate him as much as we possibly can. You know, if they could get Trump on something like, say, destroying documents, right? Like, let's say dis Trump destroyed all these documents that, that, were, that were, like, requested by Robert Mueller and the investigation. Let's say he destroyed a bunch of documents. Okay, we could show that. We could show you that. Then that would be obstruction of justice. We could show you. That's very obvious. Open and shut case, obstruction of justice. He deleted the, you know, these emails or something like that. Um, but that actually, that did happen. <laughs> Funnily enough, that happened. But it wasn't Donald Trump. It was Hillary Clinton. And James Comey refused to uh, prosecute her or I, I think even investigate it, right? I mean, it was like a little looked at and he was like, I don't know. We don't, this is a waste of our time. Okay. All right. Open and shut case. Waste your time. Sure. Uh, but Trump, which we had no evidence on except for the, you know, this baloney dossier, uh, they just went after him with everything they had because they, they thought, j just to be clear, the investigation into Donald Trump was never about Russian collusion. That, that was a smokescreen, right? The Russian collusion thing, that was a, an excuse for them to be able to look into everything about Donald Trump, the campaign, his finances, whatever they could do, his business dealings, whatever they could look at so that they could find something else that he's done illegally. Right? And that's why the news was perfectly willing to report about this every single day for the past two years, because they just assumed that at some point, something was going to be found out about Trump. He was going to be impeached or taken out of office. There's going to be a big scandal, and they could shift the narrative to that, and everyone would just forget about the collusion thing. So the collusion thing was just an excuse to look into what he was doing, and it was something that the news could just keep reporting on endlessly, knowing that there was nothing there. I mean, if there, there's, there's audio of Van Jones and I think a reporter or a, a producer at, at CNN saying, well, actually, there's nothing there. We know there's nothing there. But we're still reporting on it because people like to watch it. <laughs> that was really what they were doing. It was crazy. They recorded it saying, you can look that stuff up. The Russian thing is just a big nothing burger. Really? Yeah.
The more I see it in, constantly like Russia this, Russia that. Because it's ratings. Because it's ratings? Our ratings are incredible right now. All the nice, cutesy little ethics that used to get talked about in journalism school, you're just like, that's adorable. <laughs> So when there's nothing there, when there's no collusion, when they can't find any other dirt, what happens? This is what happens. People lose their mind. Okay, and we're gonna get your fucking son, stained Donald Trump Jr., and your daughter, and that fucking mute, fucking junkyard Jarrett. You fucking criminal. You crook. You pimp. You con man. You. Look, guys, if you're frustrated about politics, don't vent on social media about it. It's just, it's ugly. All right, that's it for me. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you want to see more like this, please subscribe and hit that bell. Remember to hit the bell. And if you hate me, you're probably Michael Rappaport. Sorry, Michael Rappaport. It's not my fault that you embarrassed yourself. You're doing, your career is doing great, even though you have no talent. So, you know, don't be such a hater. Smile a little bit. All right, <laughs> good night. We have so many people who can't see a fat man standing beside a thin one without coming to the conclusion the fat man got that way by taking advantage of the thin one. The trouble with our liberal friends is not that they're ignorant. It's just that they know so much that isn't so. Now... Rapport is the noise talking about.